Hello everyone, my name is Heer Patel and my group partners are Pauna and Olu. So if I tell you about myself, I am a master student with computer science major. This is my third semester and I'll graduate in May uh, 2021. So our, pre our project is based on K-means algorithm. Uh, this is a clustering algorithm. Our project name is Simple K-means Simulation with Numerical Data Sets. In next slide, I'll explain K-means uh, algorithm. Uh, so what is K-means? K-means clustering is the one of the simplest and popular unsupervised machine learning algorithm. So typically unsupervised algorithm make interference for data sets using you know, only input factors without referring to known or labeled out outcomes. That would be a supervised learning, but K-means uh, is unsupervised learning. So uh, experienced people say that the objective of K-means is simple, group similar data points together and then uh, discover underlying patterns. To achieve this objective, K-means looks for a fixed number K of cluster in a data set. A cluster refers to a collection of data points aggregated together because of certain similarities. So uh, in other words, the K-means algorithm identifies k number of centroids and then allocates uh, every data, pin, data points to the nearest cluster while keeping the centroid as, sm as small as possible. The means in the k-means refers to averaging of the data that is finding the centroid. So how k-means uh, k algorithm works? So to process the learning data, the k-means algorithm in data mining starts with a uh, first group of randomly selected centroids which are used as beginning points of uh, beginning points for every cluster and then perform iterative uh, calculation to optimize the position of the centroids. Uh, it holds uh, creating and optimizing cluster when either the centroid have stabilized there is no change in their values because of the clustering has been successful or the defined number of iterations has been achieved. So this is this is how K-means algorithm works. Uh, in the next uh, in the next slide, how project works will uh, take over by my friend uh, Bhavna. Thank you. Hello everyone. This is Bhavna Balbamla. The goal of our project is to make a program that simulates the K-means by creating the K-means methods and also make the program iterate certain number of times to get to the point, and also the centroids do not change but we may change this to match the algorithm and finally to make the program user oriented like user can give their own data set determine their own amount of clusters and iterate it how many times they desire to in this project we are using java as our programming language however we may consider to use python as well because of its enormous libraries and data visualization capabilities and the ide we are using is eclipse so from the next slide, my friend Olu will be taking over it. I'm Olu Shown, and I just wanted to go over how far we are. So far, we've created the method that will create the data set. As of right now, we're just hard coding it. We're not using user input in the fact that the user determines the dimensions, like the length of the rows and the columns. Right now, we're just hard coding it just to make sure that, you know, it officially works before we start putting in user features. And then also we've created our initial centroids from our data set. So what we're going to do is the initial centroids that the uh, user determines will be from the data set that they create. Again, we're hard coding it just to check for before, like errors, just to make sure that before making it more user friendly. So here we have our picture, uh, basically our code that we have so far. If you start with the one picture that is right below the word picture is the short one that says created our data set. This is basically in our main method. This is creating an array that will capture basically a, a multi-dimensional array that will capture the data set that the user creates. And with the KF2, again, the user will be able to determine how many centroids they would like and how many clusters they would like to create. So, but right now we're just hard coding it. We're testing it out with just two at the moment. Below this pic, 
um, at the extreme right, we then have creation of our data set. This is a method called get data set. Get data set. It essentially, again, we're hard coding it with 21 rows and three columns as of right now. But what we're planning to do is have the user determine, we ask the user how many rows they would like, how many columns they would like, and then we create their data set and return it back to the main method. Then shifting again to the left, we see then we have the uh, print our chosen centroids. This code here will allow, uh, will create, will choose a row, like as many rows as they need, uh, K rows basically. So they determine their K. This method will choose K rows for the user and that will be their initial centroids. The, to explain this code a little bit because it's a bit longer than the others, so it requires some explanation. The while loop that's right under the for loop for i equal to i great less than centroid house dot length. So the while row checker is equal to row selector. This is to make sure that the centroids that are selected are not the same. So there will be different centroids each time. And in the if statement, it says in the so while they're similar, we change the we change the we change the int dot random math dot random times 22. So we select randomly. We select the, sorry, there's a lot I'm thinking about at the moment. We select the rows randomly based on how many rows we have, like based on how many rows the user created their data set to be. So, so as long as row checker and row selector are the same, then we'll change row selector so that way we select a different row we then go down to the if statement that says if there like if a row selector is equal to the data set dot month meaning if it is equal to say the data set is has 22 rows if it's equal to 22 well we can't select 22 because you know we select by ind indices so we'll have to change that so i just decided to subtract five from it so that way it selects something else it'll select something else and then we go through the for loop, selecting that row and then storing it into another array that houses all the centroids. And then row checker will equal the previous row selector. So that way they'll never, like they'll never end up being similar. And then we then print it out as well. All right, so what else do we need to do? Uh, we need to now start creating the k-means method. Again, we're trying to come up with a way to do it in Java. Um, well, I don't believe this will take long though, as long as we understand, like, because we like, we're going to understand the algorithm. Again, we are considering switching to Python because Python has many libraries, but at the same time though, to get, I guess, to get a firm grip on the the algorithm, I think Java might serve our purposes as well. Again, if it proves to be difficult, we might switch over to Python. We also need to finally make this program more user oriented so the user can determine like the dimensions of their data set, determine the amount of clusters and iterate how many times they desire. So basically, how many times does k-means occur for them? Like how many times do they want k-means to go? Do they want it to go maybe twice? Or twice just to see where they end up grouped up, or do you want to see it like five times, eight times, hundred times, and then they will just loop and then print out some results for them. The reason why we're not having the user, in a sense, create their own data set from scratch, like as in put in their own numbers, is imagine if the user put in like they said they want a hundred rows, and then they said they want two columns. Well, they have to type in all those numbers, and I don't think. You know, the user, I think the, someone would get bored after that. So we decided to make it so that the they determine the dimensions, but it will fill up with random numbers. And the numbers will be in decimals, just will be in double, in de, uh, the double data type. This is so that way we can get even better, me like better measurements of show, seeing how K means would work, especially if there's like a, because there's clearly a difference between 2.1 and then 2.5 in a sense. But yeah, all we have left to do is create the k-means method and then making it so that switching over so that users have more of a say instead of hard coding it. And that's it.